Brute is a massive classic underdog, considered barely viable in PvP outside of their insane flak carrying ability, of course. For me personally, they look very interesting in Season of Discovery, offering at least three completely different experiences in one class that will now be much better. The runes look very strong, helping to lift all three specializations much closer to the competition. Beyond some critically needed damage buffs, it's mostly done by leaning further into the class fantasy of what they're already good at, namely being a tanky, hard-to-kill hybrid that most often wins by outlasting the opponent. So let's jump into how successful each specialization can expect to be at this. Let's start with Feral, a really weak PvP spec at level 60 when gear becomes available. Now they'll get a huge upgrade from Claw in uh, Mangle, the new rune, doing a lot more damage and doing a debuff that increases shred damage and bleed. So whenever they can get behind the target to shred, um, that's going to do significant damage now, much closer to backstab. They get Survival of the Fittest, a flat 10% damage reduction and 6% less crit taken in any form, and then additional 10% on top in bear form. So they're yeah, really strong. They get Savage Raw as an alternative to Gullbash, which is a finisher that buffs you with 30% increased damage for a number of seconds. The alternative to this is Skullbash, which is a 2 second interrupt on a short 10 second cooldown. A fairly short interrupt duration there, keep in mind. They get Shred. They of course have a Cat Form, Air Form, very good to avoid pulling offs and get out of any roots. They get Bash in bear form, which um, you'll probably want to talent into to make it a little bit more useful so you can either get a regrowth or a root off while they are bashed. Feline Swiftness is going to be the bread and butter of barrel, at least outdoors. They get additional mobility with charge, which offers also an interrupt. This does share a cooldown with Skull Bash, keep in mind now. They can take Nature's Grasp um, to root anyone hitting them. Very strong for getting away. And Wild Strike is an alternative rune to Survival of the Fittest, which is something to take if you've got several additional melees in your group and you are feeling pretty safe. Any melees in your group are going to be very sad if you don't have this on. So, in terms of talents, Ferocity in first tier, pretty strong for just reducing the cost of your mangle. And then you just take some thick hides or a little bit additional physical damage reduction. That's good and a couple of crit from Sharpened Claws. Pretty strong talents, especially because of Feline Swiftness. Moving into pros and cons of Feral. Yeah, as mentioned with Feline Swiftness, incredible mobility and Feral Charge on top. Nobody can really match this mobility. Hunters get dazed if they are an aspect of the cheetah. Shamans can't do much when they're in Ghost Wolf. This is quite superior to everybody else. And it's instant. I think Survival of the Fittest is going to be the play for most PvP scenarios instead of wild strikes, because barrels often suffer, in particularly in cat form, from just being demolished very quickly. 10% damage reduction and, and crit reduction for damage taken is um, very strong, very needed. And it makes you, I mean, incredibly tanky going into bear form, especially so later on. Mangle is just a massive upgrade on Claw. That's, uh, that's fairly guaranteed, since Claw is, is really bad. And uh, Shred's gonna just level up 30%, so that's really cool. You can consider Savage Raw if, um, if, you, if you consider yourself able to just burst down opponents, generally. Or if you don't have to deal with too many, like, casts like Fear and Heals. But I recommend going Skull Bash, because it's just very good to have an interrupt that it even has a slight range at 13 yards, I believe. So that's really useful to just, you know, stay on top of everybody. But it's worth keeping in mind that you don't have Ferocious Bite until 32, so you don't have much to use your combo points for, apart from Rip. Probably not gonna really do all that much, so you might just want to consider just keep shredding if you can, or mangling, until you get uh, Ferocious Bite later on. Of course, Nature's Grasp is a critical way of getting out of somebody sitting on you if you want to get out and heal, being a hybrid. Barrel is uh, gonna be good, not amazing in one-on-one, -on -one. The best part of it is that they get to decide if they really want to fight. Often they can get into stealth and open the fight. Or they can just run away if they get opened on. Uh, jump into cat form and just run away with a hot on maybe. Generally speaking, they're going to just eat mages as mages can't 
get the Feral off them at all. And with Skullbash, they're just going to be interrupted and not going to have a good time at all. Warriors and Rogues are just going to be torn to shreds in bear form with Thorns on, mangled. They're not going to have a good time against Feral's at all. Feral's are going to be a pretty decent melee in groups with their superior mobility, so they can keep up or run away and jump into bear form if they get targeted. Or alternatively, bring Wild Strike buff for several melees, which is also pretty good, considering not even Shamans will have their Wind Fury Totem yet. On top of that, of course, they can jump out of form and off-heal a bit if they are not being targeted, or finish somebody from range with Moonfire spam. That can be quite good. They have pretty okay potential later on. They can either go into Nature's Swiftness at max level, be a real outlaster with the instant healing touch, or they can even consider Deep Feral, which is going to be a big draw. Probably not going to be as strong as some might like, unless it gets buffed with other runes. So in terms of cons, Feral at level 25 don't have Ravage for a massive opener. That's a big loss and uh, something to look forward to, again, for level 40. They don't have Ferocious Bite, as mentioned. No Pounce, so also no Stun, and no Travel Form, importantly. Uh, that's more of an issue for the other specs, but um, it's, it's worth knowing. A little bit weaker as a hybrid until they can get Innovate as well. So there's this uh, whole thing about where the Tiger's Fury will be the um, old version, which is very shitty and not really worth using outside of Stealth um, before you open a fight. Or if it's going to be the Wrath of the Lich King version, which is... Um, going to give you 60 energy back on a 30 second cooldown, which would be very huge. That's been data mined, but uh, not confirmed by anybody. The only thing that has been confirmed is that some of the data mined stuff is um, is not going to happen. It was mostly there for testing. So beyond that, Feral are very susceptible to being just feared, and they do have a trinket against it, so that can help. But uh, they can just get chain feared or even feared by a hunter. Or they can just get out healed um, by priests or warlocks uh, with their dots and tank them. So they're not going to be very strong against those classes. And it's fair to say that it can be quite hard to manage to get out to heal. You do have nature's grasp, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. The root just uh, lets go too soon and um, you'll be interrupted on your regrowth. All that in mind makes Feral much better than previously and they were already decent at this low level. So they land in the top end of the B tier. They're not going to be bad. That would be my prediction. Now moving on to Restodruid. Restodruid get uh, Life Bloom. Heal over time for 7 seconds I believe. Bit of a dispel counter. If it gets dispelled it blooms instantly and heals you. So something to protect your other healing over time spells. You get Wild Growth and uh, AoE Hot for 7 seconds as well. With a sec 6 second cooldown. It's instant. So that's Huge for their potential for AoE healing. Fury of Stormrage is probably going to be the best choice as it offers you free wrath, meaning you can just stand there and regen. Because you can cast and regen at the same time if you're not spending mana, and that's what Fury of Stormrage is going to give you. And then you can just wait for instant healing touch procs. You can just fish for that, add pressure to the opponents, and have an instant healing touch ready when you need it. Could be very good. Especially when you got hots rolling, so you know, you just gotta keep an eye out for where you're expecting damage to come in. Get the hots up and just spam wrath all you can. Of course you have your regrowth, that's your best flash heal option with a 2 second cast. You just recently got a new rank. Healing touch, less strong but more efficient. It's quite slow, you can talent a little bit into it, or more into it if you want to. Rejuvenation is a strong heal over time, frankly. Verify is very useful for stealth classes to avoid them going back into stealth, of course. So, pain in the ass for rogues. You can consider going into reflection or mana regen while casting. Or you can go, as you can see on the right hand side, alternatively, you can go additionally into cast time reduction on wrath. I think that might be even better to be more offensive. You're definitely going to want nature's focus to avoid interruption and damage in the healing talents. And I think you probably want to take Furrow for um, getting instantly 10 rage when you go into bear form. That's very useful. So you can get off an instant stun or a demo shout or something. Do something useful when you get into bear form if you're getting targeted. Which reminds me that you can take Survival of the Fittest instead of Fury of Storm Rage, being a much more defensive healer, being hard to crit and take 10% less damage all the time. Definitely an option. 
And of course, you're going to want nature's grasp if melee are trying to jump you. So you can root them and get away. Pros? I mean, they just got an extreme diversity of heals with the new runes. Life room for protection of the other heal over times. And a massive AoE heal. Other than that, in terms of healing, they are just a bit slower than every other class in terms of their healing speed. But to be fair, they are probably going to be all of a sudden one of the better large group healers with wild growth being fairly spammable every six seconds and having a massive 40 yard range. So that was just hot fixed in before launch. So that looks pretty crazy. They are all of a sudden again, potentially the best offensive healer, just spamming out pressure there with wrath. If you put talents into spell cast reduction of it. Yeah, druids in general can take some hits. Um, especially if they got some hots rolling on themselves and jump into bear form, obviously making them a very solid flag carrier. Barrel being definitely the superior choice, but Resto can definitely do it as well. Very tanky in bear form and slippery can get out of any slows, but definitely better later on when they get travel form. High potential also for level 40 onwards and um, to be one of the most fun and better healers when they get their big nature swiftness. So that's one of the cons right now. They don't have that for the big instant heal if they get overwhelmed or surprised because that's the biggest problem with the Restro Druid. You have to kind of foresee where the damage is coming at best. So you already have hots going. Otherwise, you quickly can get overwhelmed. If somebody's swapping targets or something or jumping you, that can quickly become a problem because most of your healing needs either time to ramp up, you have an effect over time, or you have fairly long cast times with two seconds being the fastest. Every other class has a one and a half second cast heal. So generally speaking, their healing talents are not very good at buffing their heals. So that's a con right now. And they're missing magic to spell for sure. That's a big deal. Can't really help their teammate with getting out of polymorph, for example, or fears and th things like that. And um, yeah, they're going to be much better with the uh, travel form at level 30. Just to uh, get away from people, not get stuck in, in sticky situations. And Innovate is going to help a lot as well to just keep their mana going and keep going for longer or give Innovate to Spellcaster if, if need be. And for Rest of Druid, in terms of the tier list, it's top of the C tier. It's not super strong, but almost strong and could go higher later on. That's definitely the case when they get their instant big heal, oh shit button and travel form. The last specialization balance Druid is... A real meme and um, it's a little bit hard to say where this is going right now especially at this level on one hand it looks kind of almost strong with several additional instant cast abilities with sunfire and star search on top of moonfire so a lot of dots there and instant cast abilities sunfire and moonfire both with 10 percent crit sunfire is even better than moonfire so that's something Star Search on a low cooldown. Um, it doesn't look like Star Search is going to last insanely, but together with the other two, it looks pretty good. And then just for the rest of it, just spam Wrath, um, which is going to not cost you much. So you are going to have some mana also to pop Rejuvenation, potentially even a Regrowth in there. That could be really good in many scenarios or against certain classes. And you get Nature's Grasp and Fairy Fire, of course. And Nature's Reach for additional range is going to be much, much needed. Um, to have any success casting spells as a druid. Yeah, so pros, they just have an incredible array of these semi-bursty instant spells. They can go forever with free wrath, so making them really good in like large-scale PvP raids because they just keep going, nothing stops them. And if anybody needs some heals, they can throw some rejuvenations or regrows or heal themselves. They have Kind of self-sustained yeah and they can hold these instant healing touch uh, procs they get from spamming wrath for 15 seconds so that's huge definitely gonna want some balanced druids in your uh, pvp raids and ashen veil if you want to have some success so they have two options they can either be extremely offensive and hard to stop with their with their instant spamming spells in that sense they're very versatile because alternatively they can also be very conservative by just not using their mana to be offensive but rather just hold it for healing and outlast the opponent with free wrath damage they are hard to cc being unable to be polymorphed 
So they just need to watch out for fears, but they can outrage that most of the time because there's a low range on Warlock fear and obviously Priest fear. And since they don't have to cast much with all their instant spells, they can use that time to move around. They're going to be very good versus hunters and mages because they can take full advantage of both their hearts and their dots and just basically slowly take them down. And they're going to have a lot better time against melee when they get travel form. So that is a big con, missing travel form badly. They might struggle against melee until then, unless they can get the jump of them. Looking forward, they potentially will be a very mobile, versatile caster when travel form then comes alive and moonkin form later on. It's going to be huge for their defensive. So for level 25, they can be quite easily burst down as they don't have the moonkin form or travel form to just get away. As a defensive, they only have nature's grasp right now. And the only CC they have is entangling roots. So that's not quite on par with other casters which have more impact for CC, at least against others than uh, melee. They're missing an interrupt, so they're going to have to just outlast anything that can heal. But at least now they're very good at it with the free Wrath spell. That's what I mean with leaning into the class fantasy there. In terms of the tier list, balance is um, a C tier. It's not quite strong, but it certainly has its place in large groups if it's not getting too heavily targeted. But it's not going to be amazing in 1v1. Only against certain classes is it any good. That would be my prediction. Yeah, so that was uh, my druid deep dive. If you like these deep dives, please consider liking the video. It actually helps me out a lot. And hit subscribe if you want to stay up to date on my upcoming class deep dives. You can check out my Rogue and Hunter deep dives here.